Today's threats are not as stark as they were half a century ago. But the struggle for freedom and security and human dignity, that struggle goes on. And I've come here to this city of hope because the tests of our time demand the same fighting spirit that defined Berlin a half century ago. That was President Obama speaking from Germany's historic Brandenburg Gate in Berlin earlier today. You may remember back in 2008, then presidential candidate Barack Obama attracted 200,000 people to a speech during a visit to that same city. Today, not even one-tenth the size of that number showed up for the president of the United States. The German event coordinator said the crowd count was only 4,500. So what's changed? Fox News national security analyst KT McFarland is with me now. So he was behind, I guess, bulletproof glass there yeah. uh, to protect him, uh, just to explain the, the weirdness of that, that shot. But wow, I mean, 200,000 as a candidate and 4,500 as the president of the United States? The ever-shrinking Obama presidency. Look, Berlin is where American presidents go to make historic speeches. I mean, Kennedy went there after the Berlin airlift when we saved Berlin from Soviet encroachment. Reagan went there to say in a prophetic speech, tear down this wall, talking about the Berlin Wall and the end of communism. Obama goes there, he doesn't say anything. I mean, it was just filled with platitudes. This is not going to make the history books. The only thing that he said of any note was, well, we're going to reduce our nuclear arsenal unilaterally, and then we're going to go to the Russians and, say, and try to negotiate their reduction. Why? You know, negotiating without leverage, he's just giving the leverage away. Mm -hmm. Negotiating without leverage, that's not negotiating, that's begging. Why would he do this? Why would he go back to Berlin, the, the, the spot where he was received as such a rock star? I mean, 200,000 yeah. oh. people in Berlin to cheer him, and it was, you know, crazy reception. Why do you think his handlers would even allow him to go back knowing that it's going to be, you know, 4,000 compared to... 200,000. Right. You mean the contrast? Yes, they but knew I, they knew that this is going to be the story on the news. Well, except for the fact I think they're pretty tone deaf. Now, if you look President Obama gives speeches, right? And he thinks if you give a speech, that means the policy changes or that that establishes where we're going. But he, that's not how you govern. You give the speech and then you follow through. There's no follow through. I mean, look at the look at the things that he said to Putin. The picture yesterday of the picture of the of Putin and Obama in the, the body same body language. They could hardly stand to look at each other. Mm -hmm. They couldn't stand to be in the same room. So Obama's going to go to the same man and say, "I want you to give up your nuclear weapons, just like we are." Mm -hmm. I mean, every time the president has gone to to Putin and tried to give a goodwill gesture. We're going to cancel our missile shield in Poland and the Czech Republic. Um, we're going to do all the things you ask us. We're going to claim that at the United Nations that what you've done on sanctions with Iran is really significant when in fact it isn't. Every single time he's been rebuffed, but he keeps going back again thinking, well, this time my goodwill gesture will be reciprocated. Mm -hmm. Not a chance. And yet it's such a contrast when you see sort of the tough talk that you mentioned in the past in particular, who could forget this clip with President Ronald Reagan. General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. And then, of course, he followed it up with tear down this wall. Which I worked for President Reagan and worked on that speech. When President Reagan added those words, tear down this wall, he did that himself. The rest of the government said, don't do that. You're going out on a limb. It's too big a chance. Reagan knew where he was going with his presidency. He knew that he had all the elements in place that, that would ultimately result in our victory in the Cold War. And he, gave, he put it out there. He gave that speech. He knew he was taking a chance. Compare that to a man who goes today and just utters a bunch of platitudes and then says, well, we're going to disarm the world because we're going to give up our nuclear weapons or a good significant number of them without any ability to influence events. Totally different. Yeah, there's a reason they called Reagan the great communicator. Yeah. KT, great to see Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here.